Hi there, Gordon. Thank you for sending in these essays. Let's take a look at what you wrote here, okay? This is the one about schools and whether they should be more entertaining. So here is what you said. Education vision has always aroused public discussion for its paramount impact on society. Recently, a heated debate is underway on whether schools should provide a relaxing and engaging learning environment. On the other hand, others insist there should be that there should be a clear distinction between a playground and a school where the former is for fun and the latter is to educate. From my perspective, there are compelling reasons why schools should be more entertaining. Okay, um, well, I liked these last two sentences here, but the first two had a couple of problems, um, primarily in terms of grammar, so let's fix those problems. Um, I didn't understand this expression here, education vision. It's not a natural expression we use in English. Um, and then we don't say it's paramount impact. It's also a very unnatural expression in English, so try to avoid that. Uh, and then recently with is doesn't work. So you could say recently something has been happening or something has happened, but you can't use the present simple here like you did here with is. Um, what you could have said instead was something like recently a heated debate has emerged or a heated debate has erupted even, you could say, and that would be okay, on whether schools should provide, etc., etc. And then the rest of this is fine, okay? So, with the provision of an enjoyable learning environment, students learning, hold on here. Now here, it's like you're talking only about one student who is learning, okay? So what you really mean is students S apostrophe. So, students learning can be enhanced. One explanation for this is that students need motivation to learn and a traditional teacher-centered teaching, not A, get rid of A, and traditional teacher-centered teaching with a huge focus on odd and tedious lectures reduces the interaction between students and teachers. Conversely, based on the research conducted by the School of Education and University of Cambridge, students, S apostrophe, performance and tests and exams, S and S, is generally better if their teachers adopt more engaging teaching strategies such as learning through games and more experiential learning. Get rid of that involved, just full stop here. Hence, the primary reason for creating a pleasurable learning ambiance is to improve our education quality. Okay, fair enough, that's well done. So, let's move on to the next paragraph. It is also my deep-rooted education philosophy that urging students and having fun are not mutually exclusive. Many people hold a stereotype that if students were not paying efforts in studying and spending too much time on extracurricular activities, they would be labeled as bad students. This is the wrong conditional here. Let's try it again. So if students are not paying attention to studying and spending too much time on extracurricular activities, they would be labeled as bad students. That's fine. If students are not paying attention, they would be able, that's fine. This is mainly due to their narrow deficient definition of education. In my opinion, an ideal education should not merely measure one's academic accomplishments, get rid of on, but it is also of paramount importance to assist students to seek and pursue their life goals. Therefore, once students find some part of school experience appealing, for example, joining a basketball team, this may be the first step for students to strive for their dreams. Okay, fair enough, that's fine. To conclude, I believe that the very purpose of schools is to educate. However, using some engaging approaches in teaching is an effective method in serving this purpose. Okay, this is lovely. Um, I like a lot of this. I think you did a very nice job for your first essay. I mean, obviously we had some problems with some of the expressions um, and so forth, which we've corrected, but on the whole, you've understood the template. You've dealt with it well, and you've developed well, and you were on topic, so I was happy with that. I don't, um, it's, uh, it's nice to see that so early in the game, okay? So well done. Now I want to take, look, take a look at your second essay about the enjoyable activity. Okay, so here it is, doing an enjoyable activity. Let's see what you had to say here. To prepare for schooling, many parents encourage their children to read in order to develop relevant language skills. However, some recent studies, I-E-S here, here, there it is, suggest, without that S, that reading lots, mm, no, 
that reading, you could say, you know, it would have been nice. Uh, what's a nice collocation with reading is voraciously. That's a great word with reading. So, but maybe it wouldn't fit here. So you could try something else. Um, reading extensively. That would also be a great word here. So let's try that. However, some recent studies suggest that reading extensively at a young age may be detrimental to A, child's growth and their continuous interests, interest singular in reading. It is therefore suggested that children should engage in adorable activities such as playing, stretching, and visiting places. Get rid of that too. As a strong advocate of this approach, I'm going to illustrate the reasons behind this belief. Okay? So you just had to add a little bit more to that. It is widely acknowledged that reading is a pleasurable activity, and we should encourage children to read. You didn't need a semicolon here. You could have just left it without one. Yeah, it does not align uh, with the cognitive development of children. According to Piaget's theory of cognitive development, get rid of the children at a young age focus, without that ES, on learning through their five senses. Solely putting an emphasis on reading activities is nothing but overlooking and denying their access to the world through other senses, such as hearing, touching, and tasting. It takes a heavy toll on the overall and balanced development of children. That is lovely. I really like it. And a nice um, reference here and a lot of nice vocabulary, so that was well done. Good for you. Instead, participating in enjoyable activities and developing literacy competencies are not mutually exclusive. Theories in educational psychology repeatedly reveal the effectiveness of experiential learning. In particular, learning through activities is one of the applications of this type of comprehension and an engaging alternative to reading. For example, in a supermarket visit, children can still, uh, mm, no, can still be exposed, passive voice here, to the vocabulary items related to the supermarket, such as cashier, meat, and fruits. Hence, joining activities can also facilitate the benefits that reading has, I think is what you mean here. Okay, so given the sedentary behavior of reading and the, I wouldn't call it behavior, I would say the sedentary character of reading and the intriguing characteristics of activities, it is firmly believed that children can achieve a favorable outcome through activities. Despite this, parents should not discourage reading if a child shows an interest in developing the skill. Okay. Um, I like this. I, um, I liked that you talked about reading and I liked that you addressed it and then you talked about maybe what it lacks. So I enjoyed this. I thought you did a very nice job. Um, I thought you used a lot of really wonderful, natural, high level vocabulary and expressions. And so all that was really, um, very nice to read, but there is one major problem with your essay, and I want to talk about that uh, now. Let's look at the prompt again. The prompt says, develop better skills and more creativity. Okay, so let's talk about what you said in terms of skills and creativity. Here, you basically said that reading does not develop... Um, it does not basically follow this idea of, um, um, how can I say this? It, it does not align with Piaget's theory. Okay, but you didn't tell us here what skills perhaps reading does develop. Okay, maybe that would have been useful here. Okay, um, let's see. And then here, um, Again, you didn't talk about the development of skills. So you told us why um, it's good and how you can go to a supermarket and learn, for example. But you didn't tell us what skills are developed. And to me, what the big problem, the other big problem is that you didn't talk about creativity. So yes, you agreed that enjoyable activities are very important and you actually gave us some real world examples about how they could be used, and you even told us why reading is not such a great idea, which I think all that is great, but you missed really a big part of this, this idea about developing better skills and creativity. Um, so that's a big problem. You needed to talk about those elements absolutely as well. Okay, but as I said before, for your first essay, this is lovely, you've done a really nice job. So I'm very happy to see that. 
Um, so let's talk about what the next steps need to be. The first step is for you to correct these essays based on my suggestions, okay? Then you need to create an error correction list where you write down the mistakes that were pointed out to you and um, then correct, put the correct version next to them. You're going to add to that list with every essay correction you get back. And then the third thing you need to do, of course, is write a new set of essays. So try to do all of this within the next day or so. All right? This way you can apply everything you've been learning. So go ahead, get all that started, and let's see an essay from you in the next day or so. Uh, I wish you lots of luck.